By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a match between myself and I'm playing with an Eternal Central Thrall deck. Uh, against the zombie master and he's playing with a mono black zombie deck of course when you're called the zombie master with what else would you play now if you'd like to know more about my thrall deck because it's based on eternal central rules you can click on the info card that's appearing right now on the screen and it'll take you to a match where i'm explaining this deck i'm showing the deck list i'm explaining the mechanics i'm explaining the idea in the introduction of this video so it's definitely worthwhile if you'd like to know more about this specific deck and if you want to know more uh, about the different rule sets you can check the description below because there's a link to a video I've made explaining the different rules now let's have a look at this first game so I see I've uh, put a mind step thrall here on the battlefield 2-2 creature um, from the Fallen Empire expansion and when it's not blocked you can sacrifice it and then you can force your opponent to discard three cards. Now here we see an attack on my side and a chum block here uh, with the mummy so that means that we're going to trade and there's another mummy still on the battlefield. Now the mummy actually counts as a zombie and there's the walking dead. Always thinking about the series of course the walking dead and he's attacking here with his uh, mummy and I'm taking two damage here. I'm deciding not to block and that's quite interesting um, because the basal thrall actually is a creature that you can sack for two black mana but you have to tap it. Playing another mind step thrall so maybe that kind of explains that earlier exchange that I made with the mummy and I'm playing a strip mine here. Now remember I can play four strip mines because this is eternal central. It's just one of the differences between Eternal Central and Atlantic and, and Swedish. So Zombie Master here playing Swamp number four. Oh, playing a Bad Moon. And this is quite interesting because Bad Moon gives all black creatures plus one plus one. So that means that my board also gets pumped here. Using uh, that strip mine to take care of a Swamp. And playing a Thrall Champion here. So that's pretty cool because it gives all the Thralls plus one plus one, including himself. So that means that all my creatures now get a plus two plus two bonus. So that means that my one two Basil Thrall all of a sudden is a three four. And my Mind Step Thrall all of a sudden is a four four. And here we see a nice double block here uh, from the Zombie Master. It's a pretty good choice. He's only losing the Mummy and I'm losing my four four creature. And let's see what else he can do. Passing turn here. So that's good news for me. Maybe I can uh, build out my army playing another Bat Moon. And of course, he blocks and regenerates with the Walking Dead. But it does mean that he now gets four damage from the Basil Thrall because it gets plus three plus three so it's a one two and when you add that up you go to a four five so it's not, now it's the power and toughness of an Urnum Jinn. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And another attack so things are going good here for me. Whoa and look at this playing a Lord of the Bit. Wow and that's a seven seven flying trample creature and what you have to do you have to sacrifice a creature during your upkeep and um, if you don't then you take seven damage and look at that I'm taking seven damage the nice thing is that you can still attack with it so I'm just attacking I'm going here full force and I think that's game actually and that is it that's the game so game number one is going here to the throw deck uh, we're actually not going to sideboard so we're going straight to game number two game number two and after that victory it's the zombie master who's on the play here and that was uh when that lord of the pit hit the battlefield it was kind of over now i believe that the zombie master also plays with the lord of the pit so we're both playing so maybe uh, he'll get a chance to cast one this turn and we see a lot of activity here dark ritual into a mind step thrall and now he has a difficult decision to make because if he blocks with his walking dead he cannot regenerate but if he doesn't block, I can sack and force him to discard three cards. And that's exactly what I'm, what I'm doing. 
and he actually gets to choose and <laughs> look at this I mean that evil presence is worthless against me so he doesn't mind sacking that and he's also discarding two lands I guess he has enough lands in hand and this is nice he's taking now uh, he's taking over the mind step thrall so this is actually a really good play by the zombie master he kind of knew what I'm gonna discard doesn't matter and now I can take over the thrall and do it um, to my hand so I have to discard three cards here so discarding a terror is quite useless against the zombie deck I'm losing my Lord of the Pit and my Pestilence, especially the Pestilence there, it's quite a valuable card in my deck. I don't really mind losing the Lord of the Pit because I play with Soul Exchange, so I have a way to get it back. Then again, I am a little worried because I know my opponent is playing with an Animate Dead, so maybe he can dig up an another Animate Dead and kind of get that, um, get that Lord of the Pit on his side. Hmm, I don't think I was thinking about that one. I chose to discard it, actually. Passing turn, not drawing a mana. Oh, this is bad news for me. And he's attacking with the anime dead. And playing the book, and that's a very useful card now, because that'll get him back in the game. As you can see, he has no cards in hand, and I have little cards in hand as well after that uh, Mind Step Thrall situation. And I've got the Basil Thrall, and I can sacrifice it for two mana. Uh, this side, Dante, just attacking here. Playing a soul ring, so that kind of gives me some mana, but I need cards as well. And I don't really think there's a way for me to draw any cards with my deck. Actually, it doesn't sound great now that I say it out loud. Because the tactic, and there's a breeding pit, so that's pretty cool. Breeding pit is one black and three. It's an enchantment from Fallen Empires. You have to pay two mana during your upkeep, and at your end step you get a zero one one thrall token. So that's pretty useful here. Hopefully I can find a bat moon, because that means I would get like one, two thrill tokens. I'm sacrificing it here to do a soul exchange, and this is pretty cool. I'm looking up the Lord of the Pit, so this is exactly what you want to do. So I'm just going to uh, freeze frame here for a moment. So what you want is you want to use your soul exchange to sack your thrill token to get back your Lord of the Pit. So it'll get back as a 9-9 creature, and um, then... At the end step, you get a new Thrall token again to sack to your Lord of the Pit. So how extremely cool is that? This is this is the combo, and this is how I want it to work. Now that we have this combo going, let's see what my opponent can do. I mean, he, he needs to find a way to kind of get rid of this Lord of the Pit. And oh no, oh no. I believe that card's called Oubliette. Oh, what's that card called again? It's um, it's from the Arabian Nights. If you know, please leave a comment. It's an enchantment. It's being sees a lot of play in in Popper actually. Um, and what it does is exactly what you see on the picture. It kind of gets a creature and removes it from the game. It, it throws it in jail to rot. So my Lord of the Pit is now just stuck in a dungeon. No idea how you put a Lord of the Pit in the dungeon. It must feel at home there. But okay, this is a huge. Uh, problem for me here and I think I've stopped paying for the breeding pit now it doesn't have a function because I need the mana to find a solution here so I'm using my demonic tutor to dig for something because in the meanwhile my opponent has played zombie master and that's a huge problem for me because zombie master gives zombie um, swamp walk to all the zombies and as you can see I play black so I have swamps Wow so I just went from a great position to a horrible position um, finding my Chaos Orb, and I'm going to flip now. And that went pretty fast, even in slow mo, uh, but it was a good flip. And uh, that means the Oubliette is gone, because obviously I was flipping on the Oubliette um, to get my Lord of the Pit back on the battlefield, so at least I can kind of get back in the game here. I have to pass turn now, and I, of course I have a tapped Lord of the Pit because it comes back tapped. I mean, yuck. I, I've got two troll tokens still to sacrifice. I'm on 13 life, which is not great. And <laughs> look at this. Are you kidding me? So now he's playing his Lord of the Pit. He's attacking me with his entire army. I have to take all the damage. Uh, oh, I'm actually chum blocking one. Is that, oh no, no, I'm now second to Lord of the Pit. Uh, I'm on nine. Oh no, I'm chum blocking one. I'm second one to Lord of the Pit. I have no creatures left. Playing another breeding pit. So I guess that's kind of luck for me. 
But, I mean, I can't really attack with Lord of the Pit because I need to block his Lord of the Pit. I mean, look at this board state. There are two Lord of the Pits. And I'm playing him to Turek. I mean, it's losing a terror and an evil presence. That really, I mean, those cards were blanks in his hand. It's not looking great for me. So is he going to take the 7 damage or sack a zombie? He's going to sack a zombie. So the zombie gets eaten by the Lord of the Pit. I mean, the, both Lord of the Pits don't really have the best um, lunches imaginable. I mean, one is eating zombies. I mean, that basically eating corpses. And the other one's eating thralls that come out of a pit. I mean, yuck. Doesn't sound great. Um, but here is damage again. And I think the Zombie Master is just winning this one. I'm on six. I'm low on cards. Maybe if I can get a Drain Life, I can kind of like expand the game a little bit. But... Drawing an extra card with the book. The problem is that I cannot attack. Ooh, playing a, I think it's a Kamal Ghoul. Very, very cool card from the Arabian Nights expansion that I believe gets a plus one, plus one counter every time a creature dies, but it's at the end of the turn or something. It's a, it's a really cool card. And there's a Neff's Disc. Okay, so there is some hope here. If I can activate the disc. Now remember, I'm on four, so I... Uh, I don't think I'm going to make it because I think that Kamo Ghoul is a... No, I'm not going to make it. A Kamo Ghoul is a zombie, so it has Swamp Walk, and it gets a plus one, plus one counter because of the Thrall Sack. Oh, but of course, the Lord of the Pit has to eat. Okay, so I can make it here. So he attacks me for two, then I'm on two, and then I can, I can use the disc. Hopefully he doesn't have a Drain Life or something, and he doesn't. This is so cool. And I'm actually forgetting to pay for the breeding pit cost. So that should be destroyed right now. It doesn't really matter that much because I'm going to um, use the disc anyway. Maybe I'm going to do it after he has had his Lord of the Pit trigger. That he has to sacrifice another creature. So I guess I'm just completely forgetting here about the upkeep cost. But I should just take the breeding pit away now. That's always difficult when you don't play that often with cards. And let's have a look. We're having a, this big discussion. And I'm putting a token on the game here that shouldn't be there at all. And Kamal Ghoul is now getting another counter, so it's already 4-4. Four, four. he going to do I mean he has to sacrifice something sacrificing the zombie master interesting doesn't really matter that much I guess because I'm going to activate although with the disc the zombies also get regenerate so and there I go I pop the disc and everything goes this is interesting because the combo ghoul doesn't die not quite sure what happens here. Um, maybe you can let me know in the comments below why doesn't the Kamal Ghoul die. Maybe it has to regenerate. Anyhow, the situation is now that he has an 8-8 eight, eight creature and I have a jump blocker basically. That's what my mind step troll is because I'm on 2 life. That's exactly what happens. So I need to find blockers here. I was really hoping that my board wipe would help me here. Okay, that's kind of nice. A drain life. But it's not enough. It's not enough. It's a drag. It brings me on five life. So that's me. I'm dead. I'm dead. And what a cool game number two. Two Lord of the Pits on the battlefield here. And let's have a look at that camel ghoul to see what actually happened before we go to game number three. So um, the card itself doesn't have regenerate. But as you can remember, uh, probably can remember, there was a Lord a zombie lord on the battlefield and that gives regeneration to all the zombies so that means that Gabal Ghul got a regeneration option so he put a regeneration shield on Gabal Ghul and then when um, when I activated the Nef's disc um, it doesn't die because the regeneration shield gets into effect so it stays on the battlefield so that's probably what happened in this case and that's why i ended up with a huge couple ghoul against me and you know i still died but there was nothing else that i could have done so um we have the mystery solved and by the way it says summon ghoul as a creature type 
but it got eratat. Do you mean call that that erata erata? It's hard for me to pronounce, but anyway, it's a zombie now. So Kabo Ghoul is a ghoul and a zombie. It is both, ladies and gentlemen. So let's quickly go to game number three and see who's going to win this one. Game number three, and it's one one. So it's super exciting. And um yeah, game two. Yeah, that's just insane. <laughs> to Lord of the Pits losing because of a gamma ghoul. Uh Huge camel ghoul. Uh, let's go. So, turn two for me a basil thrall, and here there is the mummy for my opponent. The two one, and again, it's called a mummy, but it's also a zombie. And will there be another basil thrall? No, there is a chaos orb on the battlefield here, so the chaos orb couldn't like save me. And there is a scaf zombie, so a two two vanilla creature for three, but hey, it's a zombie. And there's a soaring into a pestilence and it's looking good for me here and i'm activating the pestilence exactly for one damage so the mummy gets killed and we all get one damage and that's nice when you're not playing against white uh, you know i can just put that um chaos orb on the battlefield and i don't have to worry about a disenchant or red with the shatters there's an attack here from the scav zombies meaning, meaning i'm going to uh 17 and he also plays uh walking dead so that one has regenerate and let's see oh yeah i'm pinging for one so then he has to regenerate his walking dead here and then i'm putting three in i think we had a little discussion here because i was a little bit confused like what to do and how to do it. basically what i wanted to do um was kill his creatures and get some damage in with the bat moon but obviously that does mean that i have to kill my own bezel throw so there's no real there's really no way around it or i have to choose to only destroy the walking dead which isn't really a bad deal i think in the end i'm choosing to destroy them both so we're having kind of a discussion here the problem of course is when and i think this is why i was doubting when i do that i'm actually destroying my own pestilence and that's what i'm doing here i think that's a mistake because pestilence is such a valuable card i should have kept it Especially because I was kind of ahead here. So I think that's a mistake. I could have used Pestilence the entire game to kind of kill all his uh, one toughness zombie creatures. So we're playing Bat Moons here like there's no tomorrow. And he's attacking. And wow. And here's a flip. And this is actually my first flip on a Cyclopean Mummy. At least it's a hit. I mean, <laughs> it's just funny flipping on a Cyclopean Mummy. But in my defense, it's a 4-3 a Cyclopean Mummy with the two Bat Moons on the field. And look, I'm on 13, so I can't really afford to uh, to take the damage. I'm using the Strip Mine here, um, and it might just work. It's not as powerful in a mono deck, but I don't want him to get to 3 mana, because with 3 lands, he can start playing his Zombie Lords and Escape Zombies. And there's another Bat Moon, so every black creature now gets plus 4, plus 4. And there's that second swamp again. Let's see what's going to happen. Just passing turn here. We're not doing all that much. Playing him to Turex, so he's going to lose some cards. Hopefully it's not going to be a terror or an evil presence, because they're not that useful. Oh, he's got a Pestilence too in his deck, and there's a Zombie Lord going. Pestilence is a very strong card. I, I really feel like I made a mistake just sacking a Pestilence like that. It was pretty careless. And there is a Walking Dead here. And the Walking Dead is 5-5. Five, five. Okay, and this is a huge drain life on the Walking Dead. He cannot regenerate because he doesn't have the extra mana. So here you see the Strip Mines really are really handy here. If he could have regenerated that um, Walking Dead, I would have been in a huge would have been a huge problem for me. And here I'm playing another him to Turek. Well, and that's another Pestilence gone. And also the book is gone. So he's stuck with all these cards in hand because I've removed just a lot of lands. And this Basil Thrall, I mean, it's just huge. And <laughs> look at that, the zombie mass is like, you know what? Let's just, let's just play the other Bat Moon. Who cares? I got a play set of Bat Moon. I want to show them. And there's the Oubliette taking the Basil Thrall here. That's great. And I'm able to play another creature. Can he do something? He just needs a black creature. Scave Zombies is enough here. And there's another Oubliette. 
look at this what i really need right now is um is a disc to just explode everything here oh what am i gonna do oh playing a huge drain life playing a huge drain life and that's how i win this game wow okay so i managed to win this one uh one to two with my throw army but I think the Zombie Lord put on a great show and a great fight. Beautiful decks. Um, I hope you enjoyed this match as much as I did because it's just some crazy shenanigans going on here in uh, in this matchup. If you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on one of the uh, videos that's appearing on the screen right now or visit the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do and um, help me grow and help me make more of these uh, videos. I'm hoping to invest in a better camera to give you uh, a better image so that's kind of my goal here for now. So um, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. <laughs>